Hello, everybody, and welcome to our discussion on a special decision made by management known as the sell or process further decision. So, as an overview here, we have to go back to our manufacturing accounting and take a look at what all the processes are for manufacturing. So, we start with raw materials and then we generally apply some sort of conversion cost to them. This could be labor, could be overhead, could be a little bit of both. Now, for this decision, we have a couple of options. We could sell this product after just a little bit of conversion, or we could refine it further and sell it at a higher price. That's really what it boils down to, is which decision do we want to make? Sell it at a kind of a mid-level product, or refine it further and sell it at a higher price. So the company is going to have to take a look at which of these methods is going to be most profitable for them. So what you have to consider here is even though they're going to be selling at a higher price if they process further, it's also going to take an additional investment to get that higher price. They have to spend more money to process it further. So let's take a look at a very basic example here. TLC Pros builds picnic tables for a cost of $20 and a price of $30. Now this is just a plain lumber picnic table. There's no paint, no stain, really no finishing. They are considering adding an additional product to their product line, which is just simply the picnic table with stain added to it. It's processed further. So if they do this, it's going to increase the total cost to $25 per table from the initial $20. They believe that if they do this, the new selling price would then be $40 instead of the initial $30. So we have the before cost and the after cost. We have the before revenue and the after revenue. You have to consider those, but what we're really concerned with is the incremental cost. This whole decision boils down to incremental cost, the difference between the first cost and the second cost, and then the incremental revenues, the difference between the first revenue and the second revenue. So the incremental costs are $5. We spent 20 initially, or we could spend 25. The incremental revenues are ten dollars. We could spend, we could earn thirty dollars initially, or we can earn forty dollars by selling it in a more finished stage. So the decision here is really: is it worth it to invest five dollars additional to get ten dollars in return? And hopefully the answer you see is yes. There, if somebody asks you to give them five dollars and they'll turn around and give you ten, hopefully you accept that offer. So the net benefit to process further here is $5. Now again, that's a very basic example. So now we're going to talk about a topic known as joint costs. And in this example, we're going to see one product that we have these joint costs that we have to incur. And after we incur them, after we process this product just a little bit, we're going to get to a point where we can split it into two separate products, two separately identifiable products. That's known as the split off point when we have two separately identifiable products. So again, these joint costs in many cases will be a little bit of raw materials and there may be some labor and some overhead just to get that raw material up to the point where you have two separate products. And again, that's known as the split off point. So this example, our joint costs consist of raw materials, cocoa beans, costing $1,000 to produce one ton, or 2,000 pounds. We'll have joint processing costs, including labor and overhead, of $500 per ton. That allows us to convert that those cocoa beans into two separate products. Now the total cost of one ton of product after we add the materials and the labor in, and the overhead, is $1,500. So that's our initial investment just to get to the point where we can sell two products. Now the conversion process itself in this example is going to take our, our uh, 2,000 pounds of cocoa beans and it's going to convert them into 1,500 pounds of cocoa butter and 500 pounds of cocoa powder. Those are our two separate products. So if we sell it right there without processing any further than the split off point, 
we could sell our 1,500 pounds of cocoa butter for $1,500, and we could sell our 500 pounds of cocoa powder for $900. So that adds up to a total of $2,400 of revenue, and remember, we just spent $1,500 of total joint costs. So it's profitable, even at this stage, we spent $1,500 to make $2,400. It's profitable. But the question here is, do we want to just sell it there at that point, or do we want to process one or both of these products further to sell them at a higher price? So let's take a look at our, our options here. Each one has its own option. For cocoa butter, we could sell the 1,500 pounds at $1,500, or we could process it further for $500 additional cost, and then we get to sell it for $1,800. So we're selling it for more than what we could initially. At first glance, more revenue seems good. But let's revisit that in just a bit. Now let's look at our cocoa powder. Again, we could sell our 500 pounds for $900 right now, or we could invest $600 more and sell it as instant cocoa mix for a total of $1,900. So we have a new product, a more heavily refined product. Again, more sales revenue. So the question here is which of the products, if any, should we process further? So let's revisit our cocoa butter. Now again, earlier I said that this is all about incremental costs and incremental revenues. That's really all that matters to these decisions. It's not the initial cost or revenue. It's not the ending cost or revenue. It's the difference between the two. So we need to know incremental costs and incremental revenue for both of these. The incremental cost is actually given to us. So it's $500 additional cost to process further. So we already know that one. The incremental revenue we actually have to calculate. We're moving from $1,500 revenue up to $1,800. That's an additional or incremental revenue of $300. Is it worth investing $500 to get $300? And hopefully you'll say the answer there is no. We don't want to process further. We want to sell it as it was to begin with. But now let's look at the cocoa powder. We can process it further into instant cocoa mix. The incremental cost will be 600 But let's look at the incremental revenue. We're going from 900 to 1900 So we have a $1,000 incremental revenue. The question now is, is it worth $600 investment? to generate $1,000 revenue? And the answer there is yes, we're making more revenue. Let's go ahead and process further. So that's really as simple as the decisions are. It's all about incremental cost, incremental revenue. Each individual product may have a, its own decision. We don't, for that decision, we don't need to worry about the $1,500 initial cost. That's not part of our concern. We're looking at additional cost, incremental cost, and incremental revenue. That $1,500 was known as a joint cost, and what I'll tell you is, again, it does not factor into your seller process further decision. Those are considered sunk costs because you've already incurred those costs before you even made a decision as to whether to process further or not. Regardless of what decision you make, those $1,500 in costs will stay the same. That's what makes them irrelevant. They're sunk costs because they occurred, occurred in the past, and they're irrelevant because they do not change under different alternatives. So the joint costs don't factor into this decision. However, if you want to determine the profit of each unit, for example, eventually you need to know what the full cost is. So eventually you're going to have to allocate that joint cost between the two products. Now, one way to do it is simply allocated, in this case, based on pounds. They told us it was a total of 2,000 pounds. One product had 1,500, one had 500. So that's 75% of the pounds are in the, in the cocoa butter. 25% of the pounds are in the cocoa powder. So you could argue that the first one should get 75% of the $1,500 and the other one should get 25% of the $1,500 just based on the pounds. That's a common method to use. It's pretty straightforward. But there are other options available. 
Now, this lecture ends really at this point, but in advanced cost accounting lectures, we'll be discussing some of those details on the alternative methods to allocate that joint cost. But that's really all we had for this particular lecture. I hope this has helped clarify these types of decisions. If you happen to have any questions, please feel free to post them, and I'll be glad to help out. Thank you for your time. Thank you for watching my accounting video on YouTube.com. I hope you've enjoyed that information. Accounting can be a difficult topic to conquer, and sometimes you just need additional information or assistance outside of the classroom. If you feel like you need some additional information, some additional resources, come visit my Udemy.com course. I have a variety of financial and managerial cost accounting courses available that may be able to assist you if you're having trouble with a particular course. In these courses at Udemy.com, I have additional lectures on a variety of accounting topics. We also have downloadable Excel templates for all of the various practice exercises we work, as well as a video walkthrough of the solution. I continue to update these practice exercises, so even after you join, you may see some new exercises. It's all geared toward helping you to understand the topics. So in addition to those additional lectures and the practice exercises, we also have quizzes and tests to help gauge your understanding of the topic. That may give you a better idea if there's something you need to go back and learn a little bit more about, read more about, watch a video on. We also have downloadable study notes that really try to drive that home. There's a downloadable textbook with it. So feel free to come join this class, come take a look at it. You can find this at udemy.com if you search for Severson, or you can just Google Severson Udemy Accounting to see a list of all the courses that are currently available. Again, I'm working on new courses as we go. Right now, you'll see some financial and managerial accounting courses out there. I'm working on the intermediate and advanced side of those particular courses as well, so you may see new ones out there as well. Now, email me for a special 50% off coupon code. You can send an email to chrisseverson at hotmail.com, and I will respond with that code. It's a different code for every course, depending on which one you want. I can also respond with the actual link to that course. Now, all courses at udemy.com have lifetime access, and there's also a money-back guarantee if you're not satisfied. So come check out my course at udemy.com and see if it may be a fit for you. Thank you for your time.